Hey folks, Joseph A. Savora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's called Never Been Kiss. It's a story about an insecure copy editor from the Chicago Sun-Times who one day wants him going undercover as a high school student in order to get the latest story about how real parents are a rare of children's lives. It stars Drew Barrymore, David Arquette, Molly Shannon, Michael Barton, Lily Sobieski, John C. Riley, Jeremy Jordan, Jessica Alba, Jordan Ladd, Marley Shelton, Gary Marshall, James Franco, Danny Clitwer, Marissa Jarrett Winnaker, Maya Malaflin, Giuseppe Andrews, Octavia Spencer, and Brandon Williams. It's written by Abby Kahn and Mark Silverstein, and it's directed by Roger Gaznell, who is the editor behind Home Alone and Mrs. Doubtfire, who later went on to direct the, his first film, Home Alone Free. And this is, of course, his second film, before he went on to do other movies that are basically, you know, based on an animated series such as Scooby-Doo and The Smurfs. And I really enjoy this movie too. It's it's very fun. This is of course the the Blu-ray edition that came out in 2010 that has a much better transfer than its previous DVD release. I like the other Blu-ray release and DVD release of Ever After a Cinderella Story, which I also own. This has no extras other than the trailer, but the transfer looks excellent. And very solid that's quite frankly even better I'm just happy I own this because I never owned this movie on DVD anyway I was going to one time but I was lucky enough to find this for five bucks at Target so, so <laughs> it was worth it the movie begins when a copy editor from the Chicago Sun Times named Josie Geller was played by Drew Barrymore was feeling very insecure and has never had a real relationship with a guy until suddenly her editor-in-chief named Whitford who's played by Gary Marshall you know who's been best known as the creator of Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley you know, he's also the producer, writer, and director who later went on to direct the film The Flamingo Kid, Nothing in Common, Pretty Woman and even Valentine's Day and many others. Anyway Ridford had assigned Josie to go undercover as a high school student in order to get their latest story about South Glen South High School involving what it would be like if they helped their parents become more aware of their children's lives. So during her very first day at high school, it was very miserable for her because suddenly she wants to revert into her old geek persona that actually ruined her very first high school career. She also winds up having a run-in with three obnoxious girls who are very popular named Gibby, Kristen, and Christian, all played by Jordan Ladd, Jessica Alba, and Marley Shelton, as well as the most attractive popular student named Guy Perkins who's played by Jeremy Jordan. Suddenly, Josie loses hope but reassures when a kind-hearted nerd named Aldi, who's played by Libli Sobieski, had once up becoming best of friends, who suddenly Aldi had loathed Guy and his gang and wants up inviting Josie to join in the Denominators, which is a group of intelligent students. That's what leads to one of the problems was when Aldi wants up taking uh, Josie to show where Guy and his gang actually goes to a local hangout at an old driving feeder, which happens to be El Monte driving feeder, called the court, where puts miscarry and underage drinking had taken place. But before all this had happened, Josie had developed a crush on her English teacher named Sam Coulson, who's played by Michael Barton, and wants to become the top student in his class. After reciting a romantic uh, reading from Shakespeare to Sam. 
But suddenly Josie wants to have horrible flashbacks when she was reading a romantic poem aloud in front of her class, which developed her high school crush, which a popular boy named Billy Prince is played by Danny Kutwer, who later asked her to go on their senior prom by making her dreams come true. But all of a sudden, during the night of the prom, Billy arrives with another girl and both of them had thrown eggs at her and really insulted her in a very ugly way which mutilated her and and becomes very heartbroken yeah which really tears my heart apart when I saw that scene so when things were going pretty wrong as it seems or what seems to be her managing editor Augustus Gus Strouts, who's played by John C. Riley, has started to lose patience with Josie after the rival paper scoops the court story and orders Josie to become friends with the popular kids alone. So he arranged for her to wear a hidden camera and soon the whole office had became very obsessed with her story. As a result of this, Josie confides her brother Rob, who's played by David Arquette, you know, who actually works at, at a tiki place, has trying to conquer her fears, and he's actually telling the story that Rob, who actually was a high school's most popular boy in his teens, had urges her to let go of her old self and become a new person. Yeah, because that way no one can call her Josie Grossy. Yeah, that was her nickname in high school. But to help her out, Rob decided to enroll as a student and become a very instant hit, which he had to <laughs> eat the entire uh, ball of, of coleslaw, one of the biggest ones. And she also then uses his influence to draw Josie into the cool crowd, much to the dismay of Aldi. Anyway, as Sam and Josie had grown closer, Sam had struggles with his feelings that he thinks she's a student. When Guy and Josie had attended at the prom with Rosaline and Orlando from the Shakespeare's As You Like It, Gus and Josie had offered co-workers to watch through the cameras and overjoyed that she's being voted as the prom queen until all of a sudden things have gone completely wrong and this is one of the dead giveaways which, yeah, this is what really bugs me in every single movie these days. The unbelievable truth cliche. Yes, that's what happens when, whenever you see scenes like this, you know, when they always blow their cover or something like that, you know what's going to happen. Yes, they're going to, the person that, that tries to believe in, in this story will turn out to dislike him and to just walk away until all of a sudden they have to apologize, you know, later on in, in the film. Which, that's what happened to I really hate that stupid cliché because I wish that cliché would just freaking die already. But it, that always happens to every movie I've seen. But get to the story. But what happened was, as soon as all the mean girls decided to attempt to dump dog food over Eldie, you know, Josie suddenly become very outraged by throwing her crown away and try to reveal her true identity. And that's what happens when when it warns all the students that one persona in high school means nothing in the real world. So Sam is being hurt by her lies and states that he wants nothing to do with her. Also anger Rob as well. You know, which apparently, you know, Rob was about to receive a second chance at baseball because he would soon become a coach. In order to fix this problem, Joseph decided to give Gus a story and writes an account about her appearance in it, she admits that she's never been kissed, as you know, as the title goes. Describes to the students as self Glenn self, and avoids her love for Sam, which had the entire city moved by it, and actually uh, wants of going to a baseball field in order for uh, Josie to apologize in front of the entire crowd, you know, while the baseball season begins. So that means she'll stand in the middle of the baseball field waiting for Sam to come and kiss her in front of the entire crowd So as the time runs out. But when <laughs> Sam finally came in, yeah, running very late, 
Sam finally gave her a romantic kiss, and the crowd goes wild, ready for the big game to start. And then the movie ends, which has the end credits of showing all the cast and crew and the high school yearbook pictures that you saw, you know, scene after scene, which I thought that was really clever and very cute with that the movie was going for that. Because now we know what the, the characters actually look like, you know, during their high school days. I really love this movie too. I, I think this was definitely the perfect film for about what was it like if you give it a second chance at going back to high school, even if the first career had failed miserably. And and no matter what happens, you know, you're always gonna find your true love after all this time since, you know, this has been happening to her, you know, ever since during her, her childhood days, you know, because she was she comes across as a nerd before she wants to become brand new again. That's pretty much how the film goes and I, I think it works pretty well. I mean this is definitely a Drew Barrymore's second turn after her other film you know, ever after Cinderella story. Although after that film it was Home Fries, but she plays a pregnant woman, you know, who works at a fast food restaurant. Yeah. But this one is uh, quite different from any other teen movies I've seen. You know, during 1999 we were getting so many teen films. It sort of feels like it came from the 80s. Yeah, you know, we were getting movies like She's All That, Varsity Blues, uh, American Pie, you know, this movie of course, and, and even uh, Election. <laughs> it's Yeah, this is before I, I became 14 years old and I first started joining high school after that. So it was really cool to see what was it like. Yeah, it was fun. I really enjoyed this one. It, it, this was sweet, it was funny, hilarious, and it was cool. Drew Barrymore did a very good job playing the copy editor who was originally a nerd at the time. She definitely overcomes her fears and she winds up getting her very first kiss later on in the movie. <laughs> so yeah, I know it's a big one, but you get the point. This movie also had a very good cast, too. It's, it's hard to believe that there was a lot of young stars in this movie. In fact, even uh, they got Giuseppe Andrews, who later went on to do the film Detroit Rock City. And he had a very small role in the film. He was very good. They even got James Franco in this film, too, as well. Long before he was in the TV series Freaks and Geeks. Came out the same year, by the way. And then later Spider-Man and all these other films. Yeah, he, he was very good. He played one of the guys in the film. Also, they got Octavia Spencer, you know, who's now an Oscar-winning actress for the film The Help. She just recently had a TV show called Wet Band Society. And John C. Riley, you know, he's very good at as the uh, <laughs> over-the-top managing editor in the film. And they also got Molly Shannon as Josie's um, co-worker and friend. Yeah, and there was even a scene where <laughs> she was actually teaching the sex education <laughs> in front of the entire class. And there was even a scene where they actually had to put in a, a banana with a condom inside, you know, pretending like this was a penis. <laughs> yeah, that was that one scene I remember. And there were other scenes in the film, too, where, you know, Drew Barrymore is all dressed up. And, you know, she had to borrow... Um, her brother's Rob's car, which is all banged up, and and you know, she was like dressed up like like she's pretty and everything. By the time she started tripping, and you know, while she was wearing the the video camera, there was also that other scene that I I really liked was when <laughs> when she winds up in a party, you know, with with these girls, and suddenly she was doing that awkward dance. All of a sudden, she winds up hanging out with all these uh, Jamaican guys and. They wound up giving her some brownies, which, yeah, which, believe it or not, those chocolate brownies are, are filled with marijuana and, and um, all that stuff. And that causes her to become very high, and she started dancing ar around the stage where a Spanish band was, you know, was playing the music, and she was doing all these uh, dance moves, <laughs> very awesome dance moves, though. very classy right there, yeah. 
But yeah, they had a lot of young stars. E even um, Jessica Alba too, you know, playing the uh, one of the obnoxious girls. And yeah, this was long before she went on to do the TV series Dark Angel. She was already in the film Idle Hands, the the horror comedy film. And I know she later went on to do other films and stuff. Because you know she also had a TV appearance in The Secret World of Alex Mack. And I also forgot that there was, in 1999, we also had another film called uh, Ten Days I Hate About You, which was sort of a, a tradition of teaming with the shrew when it comes to these movies. But yeah, like I said, you know, during the late 90s, we were getting so many teen movies that seems to go, starting to focus more on like how they was back in the 80s and 90s, so I, I guess they knew that's what they were going for. But yeah. I also love uh, David Arquette as Rob too. You know, he's coming across as just one of the biggest popular school <laughs> boys in school, and he's doing a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah. And, and and then they were doing all the right moves and everything. So. But this is a fun movie. You know, I I would definitely recommend this for everybody who, who loves um, high school movies or any of that stuff. And especially Drew Barrymore's performance. You know, she was very good in this. It also has a very good soundtrack, too. Uh, all the good songs that they put into the film. Even the song by R.E.M. So, at My Most Beautiful, which came from the Up album in 1998. Yeah, it worked pretty well for this movie. So, yeah. I, I really love that. And definitely check this out. It's, it's a fun movie. I really enjoyed it. I give Never Been Kiss... Four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.